Hey, what's up guys? It's your boy Slim Gooch back with another Dark Souls 3 video and today we're going to be seeing if we could beat Dark Souls 3 only using the Armor of Thorns. And if you don't know, when you wear this armor and roll into an enemy, it actually does damage to them, but it does a very, very little amount of damage. So we're going to be seeing if we can beat the entire game only doing damage to the enemies with the armor itself. Also, before we start the challenge, I feel like I should mention that somebody has done this challenge before, this lovely gentleman right here, and it's a pretty good video, so you should give it a watch if you want, but he didn't do any of the optional bosses, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do all the regular bosses and the optional bosses. So nanana boo boo stick your head in doo doo and you better finish my video before you go watch his because trust me I'll know I'll know and I already know what you're thinking Why on earth would somebody make this image of Danny DeVito? But you're also probably thinking how far do I have to get in the game till I actually get this armor? Well, that's a really cool thing that I just found out very recently that when you start the game If you immediately turn around go over to this corner here drop all your armor on the floor Do the Fortnite default dance and glitch your armor. It will all turn into the armor of thorns I know, I know, it's crazy. It's crazy that six years later after the game came out, we're still finding out cool things about it. What a great game. But now that we got the armor, we could actually start the challenge. And first thing I do is go test it on this goober over here to see what we're working with. And yeah, it's not very impressive. And unlike most of the other runs, I will never be able to improve the damage of this armor. So this is what we're stuck with. But soon after that, we make our way to the first real boss and I immediately start rolling into him, trying to poke enough holes into him to turn him into a human blood sprinkler. And yeah, we're still not doing a whole lot of damage, but luckily most of his moves are pretty easy to avoid but for some reason during the fight i decided it would be a good idea to fight him over near this precarious edge that was just begging me to roll off but luckily i never did and eventually he yeed his last haul and after that we had to fire link i get rid of all my ashen flasks because magic is for nerds and then we pump a bunch of points into our endurance and also unlike a lot of the other runs there's really not a lot of stuff we need to grab on the way there's nothing for us to upgrade we can't get any different armor we can't use any weapons all we have really is our pure guts determination and several stds until we get to the next boss i did accidentally roll down this elevator at one point but i honestly should have seen that coming and the next boss fight is a lot harder than gundir because he has a lot more health and a lot of moves that are a lot harder to dodge than any of gundir's attacks and the first phase of this fight is actually really easy like usual because it's super easy to get under him when with my armor i could easily get under there turn his balls into swish cheese for the next wine and cheese tasting with the boys but the second phase is much harder because now he has a lot more moves and he likes to do frost damage to you when you get too close to him and it just makes it way way harder especially when you're doing almost no damage per hit the easiest move for me to take advantage of was his triple dash attack that he always does at the very beginning of the phase but sometimes you gotta wait a while till he does it again but that's because at the very end of his third dash you can just run right into him and as soon as he starts charging up his attack you can get a ton of damage in but other than that there's really not a lot of moves that are really easy to take advantage of because he has a lot of area attacks where you get too close to him and you'll automatically take damage or start building up frost damage so i was just doing a lot of hit and run tactics but most of the time during the second phase i was just trying to get a little bit of damage in in between him doing his triple dash attack because that was my only really safe opportunity to get a lot of damage in myself and honestly this was actually a super tough boss fight for being only the second fight in the game but with enough luck and determination i was able to mangle those cute little feet up enough to get a very very close victory royale after that i tried to get the drop on these dogs like i did in my no bonfire run video but i forgot that i used spook to do that and i ended up just splatting against the ground like a looney tunes character and surprisingly this armor is actually pretty good at fighting off hordes of dogs but that's about the only thing it's good for and then this dude is just an absolute sicko clearly just loves the pain Let's hit me beat the crap out of me step on my cubes then me and the onion knight take out the hot boy i get a spicy hug and then i test flynn's ring to see if it affects the armor at all it doesn't so with that scientific discovery out of the way we head straight for the crystal sage and the crystal sage is a somewhat difficult fight the first phase is nothing at all though i just roll into him shredding his robes like that one guy that takes scissors to perfectly nice shirts and then turns them into shirts with holes in them yeah i don't get it either but the second phase is a lot harder but it's actually somewhat easier than with a weapon to take out the guy shooting blue magic at you because you don't actually have to stop to attack you can just roll into them on your way to the purple guy but if you make bad decisions like me and you just decide to leave him alone a lot of the times just so you can do damage to the real boss then you're probably going to have a lot tougher of a time like i did but honestly since you're rolling constantly you can actually dodge their magic pretty easily even most of the time on accident but that's pretty much what i did the entire fight just rolled into him rolling circles around him hoping i wouldn't get hit by some beam off screen and it worked out pretty well not too difficult not too easy i did almost die at a couple points but we made it through then we make our way through the cathedral ward grab lloyd's ring test that to see if it affects the armor it doesn't and then we save sigurd from the well then it's on to the deacons fight and i actually had a lot of trouble during this fight legitimately one of the hardest fights in the run due to their curse attack it's super difficult so i come back to that later so instead i just head straight for the swamp head up to the stray demon beat on him for what feels like 20 minutes just for him to sit on me with that voluptuous ass at the very last second and i cried a little bit hey future ty here and i just watched that clip back for the first time and what in the goddamn his voluptuous ass didn't even touch me i was a mile away what the hell Back to your regularly scheduled programming. 
and soon after that we make our way over to the abyss watchers which is simultaneously one of the easier and most difficult boss fights so far because this fight was long i'm talking mandingo long clocking in at 19 minutes and 40 seconds to beat this bastard the first phase is easy enough even though i started it out by rolling straight into a sword but like always i just let the red eye do most of the work and it does take a bit longer but it's definitely worth it so you can save your ss and not take too many hits before the second phase but the second phase is a bit more difficult it's not even that hard it just takes forever because that's where about 80 percent of the length of this fight comes from is during the second phase like always during the second phase of the abyss watchers fight i always just wait for him to do a spinning ballerina attack and then just roll into him at the last second but now i can't backstab him or anything like that and i do about a fart of damage with my armor so it takes a long long time i would try to roll into him more often and just get really greedy but he has so many attacks that do flame damage after the attack and it just makes it almost impossible to be next to him while he does a lot of his attacks so yeah this is basically what i did for like 90 percent of the fight just waiting for that one move and like i said it's not even that difficult it's just very time consuming and nerve wracking because when you're in a fight this long no matter how good you are you're probably going to make a few mistakes eventually and in this game a few mistakes can be death pretty quickly and you definitely do not want to have that happen after you spent 15 minutes in a single boss fight and i actually got really scared at the end because i did run out of ss and then i got cornered at the last second and i thought for sure i was about to die but he had like one hit left so i was able to finish him off luckily and after that victory we keep on trucking along through the catacombs grab the Karthus new bring and enjoy an episode of wheels gone wild and unfortunately it does not seem possible to take down this bridge with just your armor so you do have to use your fist or a weapon but it's an optional area anyway so sue me and for some stupid reason i decided to go turn off this machine just so i can fight this centipede thing even though it's not an actual boss so i don't really know why i did that i don't know i hate myself or something but it was definitely a waste of 15 minutes i'll tell you that and speaking of waste of time now we get to the old demon king and this is another extremely long boss fight he has an absolute ton of health and most of his moves are pretty easy to avoid except for his stupid flame attack that he does on the ground when you get too close to him so that does make it take even longer because if you stay too close to him to try to get a bunch of damage in you're almost guaranteed to get hit by that flame attack because unless you see it coming it's almost impossible to roll away from it in time so you're gonna want to stay about as far from him as a smash player does from deodorant about 90 percent of the time so i just stuck with the strategy of rolling in there dodging an attack getting a few hits in and then running away before he does something else and honestly the most annoying part of this fight is how often i would get stuck on his weapon because it happened almost every every time I tried to roll in there. And the second phase is pretty similar to the first, but I stay even farther away. But you can also get some hits in now when he waves his little giant wand club thing in the air and summons a bunch of fireballs on you. But before the fireballs come, you can roll in and get a few hits in yourself. But yeah, this fight was super long, super annoying. But luckily at the end, he does his giant explosion attack and then falls down for the last little bit of his health. And I guess I've always killed him pretty fast, not to notice, but I could have swore if you took too long to kill him and finish him off at the end, he would get back up and start attacking you again. But he never did that. He kind of just flopped and struggled around on the ground for a while and the whole time i was beating on him i was just waiting for him to flame on and then just start whooping my ass out of nowhere but it never happened and this has a new record for the longest fight in this run so far clocking in at 22 minutes yeah future bosses aren't looking so great right now but now we can pop in for a much easier fight with the high lord himself and this fight was actually extremely interesting because i rarely fight him long enough for him to summon his sword or his skeletons but i fought him for so long that he actually stopped summoning his skeletons for a really long time but then he started summoning him again later i also brought some alluring skulls with me just in case because i didn't want the skeletons whooping my ass the entire time i was trying to break the bracelets and that did help a little bit but it didn't help that much honestly the boss probably killed a lot more skeletons than i ever managed to but yeah this fight's pretty straightforward just keep rolling into his bracelets until he's dead even though it did take a lot longer than usual eight minutes which doesn't sound that long but usually this fight takes like one or two minutes and now before i head back to the deacons fight i wanted to see if there was any items or anything that i could help stop the build up of curse and honestly there really wasn't that many options in the areas that i had open already but one of the only options i had was the moss fruit but unfortunately one of the only ways to get moss fruit is to kill these little bastards which took a really long time and honestly wasn't worth it because yeah it helps stop the build up and slow it down but it also gives you a bunch of curse at the same time so so yeah it's kind of a stupid item but if you use it before they start doing their curse and you let your curse build up die down you'll still have a little bit more resistance than you would before but it really doesn't help that much and it honestly wasn't worth it so now we finally get back to the deacons and for some reason these are always one of the hardest boss fights in these weird little challenge runs even though they're the easiest boss fight if you do it in the regular way so the first phase is pretty easy obviously because you're not having to deal with the curse build up yet but what you want to do during the first phase is right before you get into the second phase hurt all of the tall deacons until they're almost dead this will make it a lot easier 
once you get into the second phase because once you're in the second phase they'll start doing their curse build up thing and it's always the tall deacons that are the ones casting the spell so if you go kill one of them that'll usually stop the build up for at least a minute or so and also you're definitely going to want to kill the big blue fat deacons that remind me of violet beauregard from willy wonka because eventually they will heal the main boss and it will be almost impossible at that point once he gets healed so yeah once you got all that set up it's basically just attacking the main deacon kill the big fat blue deacons and every time they start building up curse go kill one of the tall deacons and rinse and repeat that until it's over eventually all the tall deacons you heard at the beginning will die out so eventually you're gonna have to start focusing on the tall ones again before you focus back on the main boss because you most of the time will not be able to kill one of them at full health once they already start building up curse on you so yeah with all that combined this definitely made it one of the most frustrating and annoying bosses to fight in this entire run but eventually we were able to make it through now we can head back to Firelink where I can get a fresh cut from my boy Andre and then we can head to Ithril Valley where I kill this good boy and he tries to swallow me a few times but good thing he didn't because swallowing me would probably feel like when I swallow a handful of Doritos and it cuts my throat on the way down. And then we make our way through the level and I have some delicious sets of soup with my boy Sigurd, get to the dungeon, grab this key, turn into my ex and then make this death defying leap. And then make this death defying leap to save our buddy Sigurd and then we get straight up ice to flex on our haters with. Ice. And then we quickly make our way to the Yorm fight and what? What's this? Sigurd's helping me? I had no idea this would happen. Oh wow, this makes it a lot easier, doesn't it, huh? And after that, we sprint on over to Pontiff for a solo fight and this one's pretty darn difficult if I do say so myself. And the first phase of this fight is honestly all about stamina management because your instinct might just be to constantly roll spam and just dodge all of his attacks that way, but if you actually wait for his attacks and roll when you're supposed to instead of spamming, your stamina will almost never run out. And you can just keep rolling into him for the entire first phase of the fight but the most annoying part of this fight honestly is these freaking hitboxes because there's plenty of times where I roll directly into them and it does absolutely nothing and it was super annoying but the second phase of this fight is even more annoying because that's where about 90% of the length of this fight comes from and the only time I was able to really get safe damage in is when he does a jump attack at me and then you just roll into him and then try to run away before he does some crazy combo on you and the whole fight was pretty much just me doing that for like 15 minutes eventually you'll probably kill his ghost too because it's hard not to damage him and that makes it a lot easier because that basically makes it back into the first phase at least for like one or two minutes and you can get a lot of damage on him this fight was still super difficult though i ended up actually having to drink the two drinks you get from Sigurd because they give you a little bit of health and that definitely saved my life because at the end i had no essences left no drinks left and i was still fighting him and he still had a good chunk of health left this was probably the second hardest fight compared to the deacons and this one took me a good 26 minutes yeah it's getting painful at this point and now we can make our way over to our favorite femboy and surprisingly I was able to beat him my first try but this first phase has always been extremely easy because he only has a few very predictable moves and a huge hitbox that you can hit which is that giant sack thing but it's always better to hit his body because you do a little more damage that way. It's super easy to get through the arrow attack just by circling around him and everything else is just super easy just to roll straight through. But as always the second phase is a little bit trickier. The best thing to do is just stand in the middle of the arena waiting for him to spawn in and just start getting a running start right before he spawns in so you can just run straight to him so you can avoid doing the arrow attack you also have to be a little mindful of the magic balls that always spawn in every time he teleports but i was always able to avoid it pretty easily just by running left and right or dodging right when they're about to hit me but other than that it's a pretty easy second phase as well another really annoying part of the fight is when he does his health stealing attack which i did get hit by once which made the fight last a little bit longer but usually it's pretty easy to avoid just by rolling into him as soon as he does it and another another annoying part of this fight is the fire that he spawns because that's probably where i took most of my damage because i had to be close to him to get my own damage and he always spawns the fire right next to him so that makes it kind kind of hard to avoid but yeah this is definitely one of the more easier fights only took about 10 15 minutes which is actually pretty fast for this run so far and then we get immediately teleported to the dancer fight and then we immediately teleport away so we can go level up and then we come back better than ever and like most of the runs i've done for this fight the best thing to do is just stick to the back right leg which can be a little more difficult since you're rolling around all over the place but since you're already rolling you'll probably avoid his attacks anyway and like most of this fights this boss has an absolute ton of health it takes forever just to get past the first phase but the main attack you really need to avoid is his grab attack because you can get easily swooped by that and take most of your health away and the hitbox for that move is a little screwy so the best thing to do is just stay behind him or just stay at a distance so he can't reach you and once you get to the second phase it's very similar to the first phase he does have some new attacks that you need to avoid but mainly you just need to stick to them shiny cheeks and pray you don't get caught by something i did start backing away a lot more often in the second phase because his combos could be a lot more drawn out and a lot longer and you're gonna want to save your stamina and manage it a bit better in this phase but other than it taking absolutely forever this fight wasn't too bad most of his moves in both 
phases can just be dodged pretty easily and you can get your own couple hits in and then roll away and just rinse and repeat that for like 20 minutes and then you'll finally make it through the fight this fight wasn't super easy it wasn't super hard i'd probably put him somewhere in the middle of difficulty so far and now we can head straight for osiris and this is another fight that i thought was going to be a lot more difficult than it was but it honestly wasn't too bad other than him having a ton of health but that's just like every other boss so far in this run that just takes absolutely forever but this is just another boss that has an extremely hard time touching you if you're under him or near his booty cheeks so that's basically where we stayed the entire fight and the first phase that most of the time i would just keep rolling into him and eventually he'll just kind of get mad and do his attack where he summons a bunch of mist from the ground or whatever and that hurts you usually but usually you can see it coming and get away but a lot of the times i did get caught by it a little bit and if he doesn't do that when you're right up on him he'll jump into the air which is another attack that's super easy to avoid just time it right roll as soon as he's about to hit you and then you can get a few of your own hits in but once you get to the second phase it does get a little bit harder but honestly the hardest part of the second phase was managing the camera because that's the real boss fight in this because as you can see you're probably getting a big old face full of osiris ass right now but that's basically what i saw for like 90 percent of the fight because i was just trying to stay close to him but he likes to flail around and charge a lot so that makes the camera go kind of crazy a lot and even in the second phase as long as you try to stay under him or stay near the booty cheeks it's a pretty easy fight the only thing you have to worry about is that infamous dash attack which he does do every once in a while but he honestly didn't do it nearly as much as i thought but luckily you'll be able to avoid that dash attack by accident a lot since you're going to be rolling around all the time anyway so that definitely helps a lot another attack that you got to worry about in the second phase is his tailspin attack because since you got to be close to him all the time he loves doing that and he just kind of spins around a couple times but usually if you just roll into him you'll be able to avoid that too not too tough of a fight just very time consuming like most of the fights so far and right after that fight we can head to champion gundir and this is another fight that i would normally parry cheese like i would pontiff but i just decided not to do it just for the heck of it and this fight was actually pretty easy probably one of the easiest fights so far which i really didn't expect because all you really need to do is just fight him the same way you did at the beginning of the game which is basically just circling to his right 90 percent of the time use common sense dodging when needed and you'll probably end up dodging most of his moves and this fight is great because there's really not that much downtime so you'll almost be able to constantly keep attacking him and draining his health and there's really not much to do except the only time i had troubles is when i needed to heal because for some reason in the second phase i can never find the right time to heal but yeah super easy fight just keep rolling 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 and you'll get through it pretty easy he did almost jump out of the map at one point so that was kind of funny but yeah that's about it but after that we head back to firelink to level up and this is when i realized that going past 40 endurance doesn't seem to add anything to your stamina so that kind of sucks because that was basically our only means of getting any stronger or better and soon after that we make our way over to the dragon slayer armor and this was actually a pretty tough fight but you fight him basically the same way you fight gundir you just stay pretty close to him circle to his right and try to avoid all of his attacks as best as possible but unlike john deere this guy actually has a ginormous shield if you didn't notice and you can actually bonk off of it a lot so that was kind of annoying and speaking of a shield that's probably where i took about 90 percent of the damage that i received during this fight because his shield it comes out a lot faster than his actual weapon because he just loves to just swing that shit without even thinking about it but once you get to the second phase there is a whole lot to manage during this fight for one since you're constantly rolling there's a very good chance that you might accidentally roll off the edge so you really need to watch out for that and two now you got giant balls of whatever flying at you constantly and these stupid lasers that just always seem to know exactly where i'm gonna be when they explode and on top of those things you also have to actually fight the dragon slayer armor himself which makes this a very hard second phase with everything you have to think about and manage while you're fighting but if you can manage to not roll off not get hit by a laser not get hit by red magic balls of something you'll get through this fight i also got this pretty cool shot of him jumping at me right as the lasers exploded behind him so that was pretty cool and now we can finally make our way over to the twin bitches fight and yeah this was a lot harder than i thought it was going to be the first phase was easy enough most of the moves are super easy to dodge if you just roll to his right try to stick to his back most of his moves will miss the hardest part in this first phase was literally just me timing his teleport attack because a lot of the times i cannot tell what he's about to do and i'll roll either too early or too late and get hit and take some damage but other than that the first phase is pretty simple just keep timing your rolls try to get behind him make him chase you like a dog chasing his tail and you shouldn't have a problem getting past the first phase but the second phase is what makes me want to rage because now you got to do basically the first phase but with magic coming at you all the time and also the fact that you have to stay on his back directly if you actually want to damage the right prince makes my timing for all my dodges a lot harder and makes it so he can hit me a lot easier it seems this is probably one of the longest fights in the run because just getting past the first phase takes about 10 15 minutes and then once you get into the second phase you have to do all that again while dodging projectiles while trying to hurt a second enemy at the same time but luckily the tactics are basically the same as the first phase you just got to keep dodging to his right but like i said when you have to stick to his back directly directly that does make it a little bit harder to dodge some of his attacks and plus you got to deal with the projectiles but also luckily the projectiles are usually pretty easy to avoid if you just keep rolling most of the time they won't hit you but whenever they do it really pisses me off eventually you'll probably take down the bigger prince at some point which is actually a pretty good thing because you could roll in and get some damage on the smaller one while you're waiting for him to heal but i actually forgot if he did a damaging attack while he was healing and it actually killed me at one of my attempts when i was pretty close to the end and i really really wanted to cry this time but eventually about 10 attempts later i was finally able to take him down for real and this 
was probably one of the most mentally draining fights so far because of how long it takes and just how stressful it is the entire time. But after we're finally done with that fight, it's time to go take on the Ancient Wyvern. And um, listen, 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 just look, look here, listen. It, it's just me and you right now. No. No. Uh-uh. No! 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 But before we get to the Soul Ascender, we have to take out the Nameless King, and I have been dreading this fight the entire run. And the most annoying part about this fight is just getting past the first phase because I do a pitiful amount of damage against him. But luckily, after my many, 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 many attempts fighting the Nameless King in my life, I actually got pretty, pretty good at the first phase, like almost down to a science. The time that I actually beat the Nameless King, I only took two hits in the first phase, one at the very beginning, which all got healed from the Princess Ring, and then one at the very end, which I did have to use the Estus for. There's an absolute buttload of opportunities that you can get damaged on him in the first phase my favorite being when he does his fire breath because it's super easy just to run up on him and just keep rolling into him forever and ever until he's done and also when he flies up in the air throws lightning down at you and then comes down with a slam attack he always flies to the left of you and then you just run over there and you can even get some hits on that before he puts his head back up and he also does this three hit combo that sometimes went in a lightning slam and sometimes won't and it'll sometimes only be a one swipe sometimes it'll be two but it's actually pretty easy to tell if he's going to do one or the other but that's an, also a great opportunity to get a bunch of damage in and surprisingly i was actually able to stagger him at the very end of the fight which was very surprising because i don't think i've been able to stagger a single boss in this entire run but after i took that bitch out to chili's it was time to face his daddy for real and surprisingly absolutely nobody his daddy is a huge pain in the ass it actually wasn't too difficult to figure out a strategy for this fight i would basically wait till he does any of his many spearing attacks he'll either fly up in the air come down at you or he'll just stand there and do a spear attack at you which all of them could just be dodged straight through and then you can get some hits in and roll away i did have a lot of trouble with one of his charging spear attacks because it looks very similar to another one that comes out a lot faster so i would always roll too early and then at the end of my roll he would do it and then i would get hit and that was really annoying but eventually i did get pretty good at dodging most of his attacks and my favorite attack was when he would go up in the air and do a spear attack at you and sometimes he would follow it up with two three and sometimes even four more spear attacks and as long as you're rolling the entire time they will never touch you and you can get a ton of damage in and going into the second phase of the second phase of this fight it actually doesn't get too much harder he only adds like two or three different moves all involving lightning and they're all pretty easy to avoid and one of them you can actually even take advantage of where he raises raises his staff up in the air to call down a lightning strike but before he calls down the lightning strike you can get a couple rolls in and then roll away right before you get struck but this fight takes a ton of patience you definitely do not want to get greedy because each time you get hit it does a lot of damage i also try not to get super far away from him because i'm a very clingy boy and if you get super far away from him he'll start doing his wind attacks and those are hard to dodge if he's also doing another attack at the same time and that could just mess you up altogether. so you definitely just want to stick pretty close the entire time and just just take a guess how long this fight took just just take your best guess nine seconds 37 seconds, 2 minutes and 46 seconds, those are all very terrible guesses because it took 45 goddamn minutes. But at least after that, we can finally get to the last boss, and unfortunately, he is also extremely difficult. During this fight, I really just wanted to get past the first phase because I knew the second phase of this fight has always been a lot easier than the first phase. But in the first phase during his sword phase, that was probably the easiest part because I could easily just roll into him and then roll away right when he does an attack, roll into him, get a couple hits, and then roll away and just rinse and repeat that because he does attack you pretty often, so you don't have to wait too often. And his magic phase is also relatively easy because you could just keep rolling into him stay really close you'll be able to avoid most of his magic attacks and if you get lucky he'll do his giant super ultimate beam attack where you can just get a ton of free hits in and for his pyromancy phase that's when i bring out the big guns because i just run around the entire time not even attempting to hurt him because i hate the pyromancy phase and now the worst phase of all is his spear phase because for one i am terrible at dodging all of his spear attacks i don't know why i just really suck at it and that's not even the worst part the worst part of the spear phase is that he could heal during his spear phase and he loves to do that and if he starts his healing animation it's basically over because i was never able to do enough damage to get him out of it before he started it and once he starts it he will literally heal for like a minute straight and it's just you should just quit there so during that phase even though i hated it because i was really bad at avoiding all of his attacks i really just needed to keep staying right in front of him keep baiting out a bunch of attacks until he would finally leave that phase and eventually after many 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 tries i finally got him to not heal during the fight and i was finally able to beat the first phase but like i said earlier the second phase is always way easier for me than the first phase and i already knew exactly what i was going to do i would just wait for him to jump at me roll into him and roll away it literally just did that for the entire fight but even then you still got to be pretty careful because sometimes he has a follow-up attack right after he does his jumping slam attack 
attacks you really have to watch out for that because that was where i was taking most of my damage in the second phase but other than that just keep watching out for those lightning attacks they're pretty easy to avoid just keep running around wait for him to do his jumping attack and you'll get through it pretty easy and with that being said we can finally beat the solo cinder we can finally link the fire but unfortunately i'm still unable to link with any bitches so i still lose but thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video leave a like maybe subscribe if you're not already subscribed if you think i deserve it and have a great rest of your day peace Oh shit, I forgot the tree boss. Blah blah blah, joke joke joke, he's dead. Thanks for watching.